Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. A telephone call was held between His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the newly appointed Kuwaiti Prime Minister, retired General Sheikh Ahmed Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Royal Highness congratulated Sheikh Ahmed on his appointment and wished him success in his role in serving the national interests of Kuwait and its citizens. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of ties between Bahrain and Kuwait, and which continues to receive the support of both His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Amir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Nawaf. Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah. His Royal Highness and General Sheikh Ahmed also discussed means to further develop cooperation and coordination across areas of shared interest. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadibiyya Palace. The cabinet extended its best wishes to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness, and the citizens and residents of Bahrain as well as the Arab and Islamic nations on the occasion of the upcoming Islamic Hijri New Year 1444. The cabinet noted Bahrain's success in retaining its Tier 1 status in the U.S. Department of State Trafficking and Persons report, the highest international rating in government anti-trafficking performance. The cabinet highlighted the kingdom's commitment to protecting the rights of citizens and residents throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, which is in line with the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness. The cabinet directed that current anti-trafficking policies and measures be maintained to ensure that the kingdom continues to retain its tier one status. His Royal Highness directed even greater oversight, accountability and responsibility in relation to the management of public funds and expressed thanks and appreciation to the Ministry of Interior and to all those who contributed to identifying individuals responsible for committing administrative and financial violations. The Cabinet highlighted Bahrain's accession to the Integrative Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development, which is also joined by the UAE, Egypt and Jordan to enhance the integration of economic and industrial capabilities and expertise, diversify the economy, promote growth and provide quality employment opportunities. The cabinet welcomed the agreement by Russia and Ukraine on the resumption of grain exports from both countries via the Black Sea, noting the agreement's importance to food security in addressing the global grain shortage and in reducing grain prices. The cabinet stressed the importance of resolving the conflict by peaceful means throughout diplomatic solutions and dialogue and to secure a lasting and comprehensive peace. The cabinet approved the following. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding preliminary estimates in relation to the state budget for the fiscal year 2022-2023-2024. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decree law amending provisions of decree law establishing a retirement fund for Bahraini and non-Bahraini officers and personnel of the BDF and public security, and the decree law on the management and competencies of the fund. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on proposed legislative amendments to reflect changes to areas of responsibility of some ministries following recent ministerial appointments. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to a draft law submitted by the Council of Representatives. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Industry and Commerce regarding the enhancement of the Kingdom's economic competitiveness. And a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the approval of the authority's reports and the cabinet then reviewed the following. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the Kingdom's economic indicators for the first half of 2022. The memorandum provided a positive report on the Kingdom's economic performance, which reflects Team Bahrain's commitment to implementing the economic recovery plan and support for the Kingdom's economic development. Finally, the Cabinet took note of a ministerial report on the Kingdom's participation in the Farnborough International Airshow. 
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued a circular regarding the 1444 Hijri New Year holiday. The Kingdom's ministries and public institutions will be closed on the 1st of Muharram, corresponding to Saturday, July 30th, 2022. The circular added that Saturday is already an official holiday. Sunday, July 31st, will be given in lieu. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, attended the conclusion of the 17th edition of the Asian Handball Junior Championship. The final match was between the national junior handball team and its Japanese counterpart was set up in Khalifa Sports City, which ended with a score of 24 to 20 for Japan. His Highness praised the two teams' performances during the match, which affirmed their entitlement to reach this stage in the championship, expressing his pleasure with the honorable levels that the national junior team provided throughout the Asian sports event, where the team earned second place and was qualified for the World Cup finals next year. His Highness hailed the efforts of the Bahrain Handball Federation in hosting and organizing this continental sports event, which had the positive effect on the success of the championship. He expressed appreciation for the efforts of the World working committees and making this event a success. An implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to start workshops to, in order to determine the mechanisms and priorities that will shape the future aspirations of government work. The third axis workshop, Social Services Work, was launched under the chairmanship of the Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan. The minister affirmed the continuous keenness of Bahrain to provide all the requirements and needs of citizens and to meet their aspirations for a prosperous life, foremost of which in the provision of appropriate social services in a way that enhances the outcomes of government work in light of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness. Hamidan added that the citizen is the main pillar of development and construction process and ensuring this comfort is the first goal of the government. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman Lam Ayyad, stated that Bahrain has taken a special path in building national capacities and investing in the energies and capabilities of the youth, which is evident through the initiatives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al-Khalifa, for the empowerment of the youth, which has made the kingdom a global model in empowering the youth and preparing them to have a crucial role in shaping Bahrain's future. The Minister said that His Highness Sheikh Nasser believes that moving forward Forward towards a brighter future for the kingdom is through investment in youth energies, qualifying them to participate in various national workstations, supporting them to be an integral part of the decision-making process and listening to their views and reflections. He added that the committee will contribute to empowering young people in public and private sector institutions who are looking for training opportunities, scholarships, and career advancement possibilities in line with their abilities and ambitions. Lemayed expressed optimism that the committee will leave a positive outcome for young Bahrainis to develop their work status. A high-level Bahraini delegation led by the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed al kabi attended the For Farm Borough International Air Show held in the UK. The participation in the world event is within the framework of the efforts exerted by the work team of the Bahrain International Air Show in line with the directives of His Majesty the King's personal representative and president of B BIAS Supreme Organizing Committee, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to highlight bias at the international level and attract mega world aviation companies and international partners to take part in it. The sixth edition of BIAS, set to be held at the Al Sakhir Air Base on November 9 to 11, 2022, will coincide with its 10th anniversary. Anniversary. On the occasion, the Minister of Transportation said that the Kingdom's participation in the air show follows the outstanding success of BIAS 2018, adding that it is also part of the work team's efforts to attract a large number of international companies to participate in BIAS 2022. The Health Minister Dr. Jalila Hassan received Gulf Health Council Director General Sleiman al-Dakhil to discuss basic preventive and development programs. The Minister 
commended the advanced level of cooperation between the GCC member states. She praised the pivotal role played by the Gulf Health Council in enhancing coordination and drawing up common plans. She noted its dedicated efforts to strengthen cooperation and achieve the aspired goals. The two sides also reviewed indicators related to joint health programs and initiatives and an assessment of their role in ensuring the continuity of premium health services in the GCC countries. The Under Secretary for Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, announced the activation of Trusted Traveler Agreement signed between Manama and Washington in January 2021 within the Global Entry Program. Sheikh Hisham said that the kingdoms joining this program will contribute in easing easing citizens' entry to the U.S. The Undersecretary pointed out that it is possible for Bahraini citizens wishing to benefit from the program to start creating an account to register in the program and pay a fee of $100 to get a five-year membership. He explained that passing the personal interview upon arrival to the airport is one of the requirements, noting that it is a po possible to activate the program's card within 30 days from receiving it after approval. Sheikh Hisham affirmed that the membership in the Global Entry Program ensures the members do not need to wait in long queues where they can cross U.S. borders using automated identification devices installed in private ports for registries. There will be fewer inspection procedures and no documents need to be filed when entering the U.S. In addition, citizens will benefit from the express entry available in major airports. In line with the goals of the National Program for the Treatment of Heart Attacks, the Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Specialized Cardiac Center launched the Treasure Your Heart campaign. More on this report. The Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Cardiac Center launched the Treasure Your Heart National Awareness Campaign to promote heart health and early intervention in the case of acute heart attacks. The campaign is part of national efforts to provide high-quality and sustainable health care, which is a priority for all government health institutions to guarantee the safety and well-being of all citizens and residents. The goal is to be able to provide emergency surgery for patients with acute heart attacks. This includes both locals and expatriates who are brought to our cardiac center for emergency surgery. This has only been successful by forming a heart attack network that combines all the national um, hospitals available. Any patient who has been diagnosed with a heart attack is brought to the cardiac center by the national ambulance. We work closely in collaboration uh, with them. And I'm really, really proud of the new advent of what we call as pre-hospital activation, whereby the paramedics can uh, visit a patient uh, in, in his home after having dialed 999. And if the paramedic uh, suspects that the patient may have a heart attack, an ECG is done, it is transferred to our command center here, and the patient is accepted directly from home to our cardiac center to the operating theater. And to facilitate that, we have uh, uh, run and uh, organized several courses with the National Ambulance whereby the paramedics have, have had an intensive course in recognition of the symptoms of a heart attack, how to perform the 12-lead ECG, how to transmit the 12-lead ECG, and to give the initial first aid required for these patients before they are brought to us. In January 2022, the center launched the National Acute Heart Attack Program, which aims to treat all patients with acute heart attacks, and more than 400 patients had undergone emergency surgery to treat their heart attacks since the launch of the program. The safety and health of the community are collective responsibility of all relevant authorities. There is a continuous cooperation between the National Ambulance Center and Mohammed bin Khalifa Carding Center. Cooperation framework has been established between the National Ambulance Center and Mohammed bin Khalifa Carding Center as all cases uh, that required immediate intervention to deal with the uh, heart-related injuries and diseases are transferred at the earliest and with the highest professional standards. The medics of the National Ambulance Center are trained through many specialized training courses, aiming to shed lights on the foundation of classifying emergency cases. 
and how to deal with them in the pre-hospital phase. Additionally, the National Ambulance Center continues to organize such as programs and courses in the way that uh, contributes the rising uh, the efficiency and capabilities of the center's employees according to the highest standards. The Treasure Your Heart campaign aims to support the National Acute Heart Attack Program by providing basic essential information about the heart disease and helping raise awareness about the risk factors and the best ways to treat and prevent them. A joint statement was issued at the conclusion of the official visit of the President of Kazakhstan, Qasem Tokayev, to Saudi Arabia. The joint statement praised the development witnessed by the economic and investment relations between the two countries and agreed to work to strengthen the economic and trade partnership between them in light of Saudi Arabia's 2030 vision and Kazakhstan 2050. The two sides also praised the positive results of the roundtable from between forum between the two countries, during which a number of agreements and MOUs were signed. The two sides agreed to expedite the approval of the Investment Protection and Promotion Agreement in order to promote investment exchange between the two countries. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Assoumi, delivered a speech during the fourth high-level regional conference for the protection and promotion of human rights, which was held in Cairo. Al Assoumi called for a comprehensive Arab strategic vision in order to ensure the enjoyment of all basic human rights stipulated in international agreements and covenants and their protection, especially in times of epidemics and crises. He stressed that the legislative dimension in protecting human rights in such exceptional times is of great importance. He pointed out that the pandemic had serious repercussions on all levels, especially on the health, economic and social levels, as well as negative repercussions on the human rights system in general. <laughs> 